Bishop Chester Wright, and this is the video series uh, entitled The Biblical Principles of Governing the Eyes. This is lesson number 18, and uh, I'd like to start today with these scriptures. Ephesians 5, verses 14 through 16. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. What a, what a challenge. Now, of course, he's, uh, <laughs> he, uh, he's not talking about those that are naturally asleep because the naturally asleep aren't dead. Uh, they're just asleep. So he's talking about two separate conditions here of the people of God. He spoke this to the people of God. This is the book of Ephesians. Awake thou that sleepest, and some have slept so long that they've actually died spiritually, that if we would awake and arise from our spiritual being spiritually dead, that Christ would give us light. And in this case, life and light are synonymous. See then she works circumspectly and not as fools, but as wise. What does he mean? We, we need to walk wisely and carefully that we not allow ourselves to be entrapped in something that's going to undermine our walk with God, that's going to undermine our relationship with God. And so uh, he gives us a hint of how to do that by having awareness in our minds that we should redeem the time to save the time, salvage the time, bring, when you redeem something, you, you buy it out of slavery or you, you set it free. Uh, someone that is, uh, when we talk about redemption for, in regards to salvation, we've been redeemed from a bondage and sin, bondage to sin. We've been redeemed or, or, or bought or delivered from a life of sin. And so he's saying here to redeem the time. It doesn't mean just save time or do things in a time-saving manner. It means to take time, the time of our lives, and redeem its usage. Let our usage be that which is redemptive in its, in its uh, impact upon us, where it contributes to our salvation instead of contributing to our downfall of it or, or of putting us asleep or even taking our spiritual life and turning it into spiritual death. And he said, the reason we need to have this focus, we need to wake up. We need to come to ourselves. We need to be to rise up out of our deadness and have an, a, an awake, a wakeful living relationship with God is because the days are evil, and we cannot be who we need to be in this time and live the way we need to live and be the conduit for the Lord's purposes and ministry in this time if we're not awake and if we're not using our time in a way that contributes to salvation. The problem is this. We have never lived in a day where there are more time-consuming opportunities, activities, methodologies. And it's so amazing when people say, well, I don't have time. I don't have time. Wait a minute. you got the same 24 hours in a day you've ever had. How can we not have time? I don't have time to pray. I'm busy. I don't have time. I don't have time. I don't have time to study the Word. I don't have time to be involved in in uh, seeing the law saved. I don't have time. Why? We don't have less than 24 hours a day now because we're so involved in things that are consuming time. Very few people actually work for a living more time today. I mean, if you were a farmer all those years ago 
when there were not all this heavy equipment. You, you work 12, 14, 16 hour days, and yet they still had time with their family, and they still had time for God and for their relationship with God. People don't work more today on average than people used to work 100 years ago. We don't work. We have so many more conveniences. Those who cook, prepare our meals, they just pull the bread out of the drawer and open the, lo- open the plastic bag, take out the bread out of the loaf. They don't have to take grain and, and, and mill it into flour and then mix that flour with oil or water or whatever they mix it with and make it into dough and then put it into a stove that a fire had to be built in and bake it and watch it carefully till it, so that it's not burned and prepared. No, they don't have to do any of that now. You can throw the clothes in the wash machine. Throw them in a the dryer. You don't have to wash stuff out by hand and hang it on a wire. We don't have time today. We need to ask ourselves why we don't have time for God. We don't have time for his word. We don't have time for the kingdom of God and being involved with the loss. Why is it we don't have time? Because we're not redeeming the time. And why are we not redeeming the time? Because we have undisciplined eyes. We've given in to the lust of the eyes and the lust of the flesh. This aimless eye roving today is called surfing. It's called surfing. We don't go to the internet with a specific need or question that we're looking for. We don't go looking, well, I need a pair of pants. So I go looking for that pair of pants, I buy it and I'm done, I move on. We don't do that. We don't know that, do that. We don't just check the weather. Uh, Now we can watch all kind of entertaining videos that are posted on those same apps and take time. We, We found out the weather in just a few moments, but we can spend 15, 20 minutes, half hour just watching all these curious videos they've posted, or we can, we can uh, check our email, but how many emails are advertisements, and we click on the advertisement, next thing you know, we're looking at their catalog, or their, their, what used to be called a catalog, their online catalog, and we're looking at all that, and we, we go that way, or somebody on social media posts a, we, we're trying to keep up with our friends, but then we don't just follow our friends, we follow all the, the stuff there, it's whether it's Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or whatever it would be. We're reading through all these, and we're not just reading through all the things that somebody else posted. We're reading all the comments that somebody else posted. Why? We spend an hour on social media is almost unthinkable because it's too short because we've got to keep up with everybody. We've got to know when people went to bed and what they ate and what their dessert was tonight. Really, we got to know all that. We got to know all that. So we spend all that time doing that or, or we, we need a break. So we need some entertainment. So we may surf YouTube and watch all the latest viral things. And, or we may go on a website, and surf that website, whether it's okay or not okay. Cause there's some very, some very uh, educational websites that you can get on and spend a lot of time learning, learning stuff. And we can do that. And so you can, you can spend a lot of time doing that and end up with no time for family, no time for God, no time for prayer, no time for study, no time for the lost. I'm busy, busy. We've never been busier doing nothing than we've ever been before. We are busy doing nothing. In fact, it would be shocking to most of us how that once we got over the withdrawals of the first day or two of not doing any of that, how much more time we've got to do other things that are far more constructive. It'd be amazing to us. But we use our time with no destination, no goal, no purpose, just filling up time, looking at meaningless and worthless subject matter even if it's not morally wrong content. Even if we're not lusting after anything we're seeing, we're just, we're just spending time, spending time. We're like the modern day Athenians. 
were people who surfed just searching to hear and to see some new thing. Just see or hear some new thing. Now, you know, I've seen a few of the videos. These guys, you know, the, the uh, 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 oh, what is it called? Uh, where they do all these impossible shots with a basketball or whatever. And, uh, you know, and they make a living because they do these videos where they will shoot a shot from off a roof down 14 floors through a basket hoop. They may have to video that shot a thousand times to finally get one through there, but you only see that one. And because it's so wild and unspectacular, people watch that. And if you watch it enough time, YouTube pays them money. And they have so many people watching all this stuff that they support all these guys. It's their living. It's what they do for a living. And none of it's sin. None of it's wrong to watch it. It's just that they're just spending their life presenting the great exception to a rule to get that one shot so they can put together a few of those shots and you'll watch it so that they can have viewers and so they get paid for that. Okay, all right. So maybe none of that is sin in the action. Maybe none of it's morally wrong. But what did it add to my wife, my life? What did it add to my life? What did it, how did it edify me? How did it make me a better person? You say it's wrong to watch that? I didn't say that. I'm talking about the time spent. You know, can I watch one of those for the 30 seconds it runs or the minute it runs and it not be a real threat to my walk with God? Yeah. But if I'm on there an hour later, going back and watching all the other ones, I just lost an hour that I'll never regain. Never regain it. It's gone. So whatever positive and productive thing I could do naturally and spiritually, it's not going to get done because I don't have the time. I don't have the time. I don't have the time. People can't hardly sit through a 30 or minute or hour long message in church, but they'll sit and watch a movie for two or three hours and not think anything of it. Or binge watch their favorite TV program because they, they, they were able to get it now where they've got the whole season and they'll sit there and watch 45-minute segment after 45-minute segment over and over and over again and never think anything about it. But you let church go a few minutes past what their expectation is, and they're restless. They're restless. There's a problem. And we think this is okay. We think this should be okay with God. What if I sat and talked to a woman that's not my wife and laughed and talked with her and just enjoyed my time with her? What if I did that every day? Instead of spending that time with my wife, I'm spending that with this other person. And we never touch, and we never talk about anything immoral. We just spend this time together. Now, I only have 24 hours a day, and if I spend an hour or two or three with this person regularly, that's time I don't have for my wife. And again, I'm, we may never touch, we may, may never talk about anything immoral. We may never do anything immoral. But is my wife going to be okay with that? No. Should my God be okay with that? Should he? Like surfing in the ocean. We tried to find the wave in this world and go along for the ride just to see where it takes us. That's why it's called surfing. You ever watch surfers? Not very long ago, I was in a place where I had a few moments and I was uh, passing by this place and uh, there were some guys that were surfing. And they'd sit out there on those surfboards waiting for the next wave to come. And they had to judge what that wave was going to be like because everybody wants to surf the best wave. And that best wave gives you the best ride. And so you sit there and you may start and realize it's not going to be what it should be. And so you, you abort that, that time of surfing and go back to waiting. And you're waiting and you're looking for wave after wave. And you're just waiting for that next big wave to come along. And so we go 
we go online or videos or we try the newest movie or, or we're reading something. We want to read the latest thing. Even wholesome recreational reading can be so time-consuming we don't have time for God. Been there, done that. Read something interesting and form it informative, but not edifying. Interesting and informing is not the, informative. It's not the same thing as being edifying. It's not the same thing. It's not the same thing. It is not the same thing. It's not. It's not. The owners of YouTube have made a fortune capitalizing on this time-filling, time-wasting activity. You know, there's some good stuff on there. You can hear preaching on the Internet. I got two channels on YouTube myself. Apostolic Iron and Bible with the Bishop. In fact, these videos are going to be posted on, on YouTube under my Bible with the Bishop channel. There's good on there. There's edifying things on there. But, you know, when you open up the page, there's all kind of things it's offering you based on what it thinks your history is. And a lot of them are interesting. They're interesting. There's actually some really good worship songs on there you can watch. Yeah. Yeah, I have people in all of my travels that, that come up to me and say, I've been watching your stuff here, and all that's really helping me. Praise God. Well, that's why I'm sitting in this studio videoing this, to be a blessing to somebody, to edify somebody. But the question is, <laughs> What about the time I do use that's not edifying? It's not immoral. I'm not doing something wrong with it. I'm just consuming time. I'm resting. Well, resting's good. But am I taking a break from God? Is that resting? It, can I call it resting if I'm taking a break from God? I don't think so. I don't think so. Is it wrong to spend countless hours? Is it sin to go on YouTube? Probably not. Is it wrong to spend countless hours just surfing around looking for the next viral wave? In the sense that it's a violation of the word of God and redeeming the time, yes. Yes. Now, I can't pray all, di all, all the time. Most days I need to eat. I need to take out and eat. I can't study the Bible all day. And I've got a wife and kids and grandkids. And, you know, I'm expected of God to be a good husband and a good father and a good grandfather. And I have friends and that I communicate with in a positive way. And I have time for them. But here's the deal. If I'm doing things that God has instructed me to do, even if it appears to be natural, he still is willing to fellowship with me doing that. But if I'm just wasting time that can I can never get back and I got no po nothing positive out of it, that's really negative. But what about this? What if my innocent surfing gets so dissatisfying that it becomes less than innocent and I find things now that are negative for my soul because my eyes weren't satisfied and I kept looking and looking and looking for something that I could connect to emotionally or that might bring me some kind of pleasure. I'm reading this to you again, Ephesians 4, 5, verse 14 through 16. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. What do wise people do? Redeeming the time because they recognize the spiritual environment of the days we live in and that it's evil.
in Colossians, uh, Paul said it this way. Colossians 4, verse 5. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. I have to have interaction with this world, the people of this world. First of all, I have to do that because I'm not called to be a spiritual hermit. How can I minister to people if I don't interact with them? If I am not where they are, how can I do that? But at the same time, in natural course of life, I, I have to go to the grocery store. I have to go to the dry cleaner to get a haircut. Uh, I have to go to the bank. Uh, I got to stop someplace to get fuel for my vehicle. Uh, maybe we are going out to eat uh, because we've been very busy and I don't want my wife to cook when she's really tired like that. So we, it's really faster for us to go out and sit and get something to eat. And so now we're interacting with the people around us uh, indirectly and we're interacting with the uh, server and then also with the cooks and all of them. We're, we're interacting with all of them. So uh, the scripture says that we are to walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. So our, the way we conduct our lives is a witness before we ever open our mouths. And the, here's the thing that the world doesn't want to tell you. They're paying attention. Now, often they're paying attention to find fault. Why do they need to find fault with Christians? Because they're under conviction. They know what they're doing is wrong, and they're trying to justify it by finding Christians that are not living by the word of God. But the hungry person out there that is sick and tired of being empty, sick and tired of trying to fill that emptiness with stuff that doesn't work, they are watching to see if what you and I have is real. So it says that we should walk in wisdom toward them that are without redeeming the time. Paul in Romans said it a little bit different. Romans chapter 13 and verse 10 says, Love worketh no ill to his neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Now, neighbor there is not the same thing as my brother and sister in Christ. Because when the Samaritan, when, the, when, when one of the Pharisees said to Jesus, Who is my neighbor? Because the word of God says that I, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And he says, who is thy neighbor? Who is my neighbor? And Jesus told him the story of the Good Samaritan. And he did not know the man that had fallen among thieves, but he stopped his life. There was a priest that went by. There was a Levite went by. They walked, they walked around him because they, they were too busy being religious to take the time to help this man who was in a dangerous position. He had wounds that needed tending. He'd been robbed. They'd, he'd been stripped of his clothes. His means of transport was gone. And so this Samaritan stopped and spent time binding up this person's wound, poured in oil and wine, the, the, the alcohol to... Uh, purge of uh, disease and the oil to soothe, and then bound it up. Where did he get those cloths from? He probably tore it off his own garment. And then, then, he put the man on his own donkey and led that donkey to the nearest inn so he could be watched over. And he told the innkeeper, uh, take care of him till I return and I'll pay you whatever I owe you. So, However long he stays here, I'll pay you for all of your, for him, lodge, you're lodging him for, for your care for him. I'll pay you. Now, apparently the innkeeper knew the Samaritan and knew he was good for his, uh, good for his word or good for his promises. But Jesus called this man his neighbor. So love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for, our, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Why? Because the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. 
Now, wait, wait a minute. If we know the time, and we know the time is short, and we're going to obey the second greatest command, which is to love my neighbor as myself. How do I love my neighbor as myself? Well, I love myself enough, I want to be saved. So how can I love my neighbor as myself if I don't care about their salvation? So I've got to know what the time is, the, con- the day it is, how close we are to all of this wrapping up. I've got to realize that, e- that every time I see a person, that may be the last time I see them, the only opportunity I've got. And so I've got to put the kingdom first ahead of my plans and whatever I'm doing so that I have the time to stop and help my neighbor. And so the night is far spent, the day is at hand, meaning it's about here. The night's almost go over with, and daylight's about to come. That's the rapture of the church. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. In other words, I'm in the dark, but I don't have to act like those that are in the dark. I've got a lamp under my feet, a light under my path. I've got the word of God. I've got the spirit of God to be light within me. I don't have to do what they do. I don't have to live what they like they live. I don't have to seek for the things for satisfaction that they have to because they are empty. I'm not empty. But I can't take all of that and turn it on myself and it be just for me. I've got to let love work no ill to my neighbor. How does love work no ill? Love doesn't let me put me and my agenda ahead of the need of my lost neighbor. It doesn't let me do that. It doesn't let me do that. But if I am filling my time with profit, unprofitable stuff, or as one of the lessons talked about, evil is worthlessness, worthless stuff, that when I'm done, my life is not one bit better that whatever chuckle I had from some of those videos, it was very short-lived. And again, I'm not talking about the videos themselves or, or any of the technology. I'm talking about the amount of time we, we spend on it and the purposeless, aimless, directionless time we send, spend just surfing, just surfing. So Paul concludes in chapter 13, verse 13, Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying. Isn't it amazing how much sin is done in the dark that people don't do the same thing in the daylight? Isn't that amazing? It's the works of darkness. Think of the sin. He names it. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness. That's partying and drunkenness not in chambering and wantonness. Chambering is what you do in your bedchamber uh, if it's done outside the boundaries of the word of God. Not in strife and envying. And how much of this world is based on strife and envying? How much of it? How much of it? I see what somebody else has, and I want it. Somebody comes up with a brand new weirdo hairdo, and the next thing you know, other people are wanting their hair like that. Strife and envy, strife and envy. And finally he said, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. So if I know me and I know my flesh, by the grace of God, I'm going to put on Jesus in the sense that his righteousness, his holiness, his goodness, his purpose, his focus. That's going to become who I am in him. And in order to maintain that and to live that, I have to consciously, by the grace of God, not put myself in a place where I will fulfill, give flesh an opportunity to fulfill its lust. I'm not going to make place or make provision, supply what the flesh needs to fulfill its lusts, its unbiblical, unscriptural, unedifying, counterproductive, worthless activities in the flesh. Now, I doubt there's any of us that haven't at times 
spent too much time aimlessly surfing the net. Time we could have been re- reading, time we could have been praying, time we could have been studying the Word. Time we could have spent with somebody we love, just sharing with them. I mean, how easy it is as a family to be sitting around together and everybody's on their phone, everybody's on their iPad. How easy is that to do? Been there, done that. Yeah, yeah. How am I showing love like that? I'm not. How are you showing love like that? You're not. We may be talking about something, you want to check it real quick or whatever. But to just sit there and play a game on the video, on, on, on the device, so that I don't have to really be invested in this fellowship, be invested in this conversation. I'm not redeeming the time, and I'm not showing the proper love to others. If I'm talking to somebody and they're on their phone or whatever, I don't like it. I don't like it. If I'm talking and they're on their phone, it's insulting. Well, if I feel like they, that way when I'm talking and somebody else is not paying attention to me, I have to be honest enough with myself to admit that if they're talking and I'm on my iPad or my phone, that it's insulting to them. It's insulting. We must redeem the time because the days are evil. It's time for us to be honest with ourselves about this very limited resource we have called time and that we use it productively for our relationship with God, our relationship with people, and for their relationship with God in the way we can influence them through us. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, I I pray and loose the grace of God upon you and upon me that I will let God put in my heart the desire and work in me to, to will, to desire, to resolve that I am going to use the time he's given me wisely and that I might please him, that you might please him, and that we might be involved in the work of his kingdom individually and together in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. Amen. Thank you.